we joined, so they got the message. But um, okay, cool, so cool. you were basically reaching out to your friends who've been on tour and basically asking, like, what do I need, right? Yes, yes. Okay. Because I, like, I was so concerned about, like, what stuff I needed. Because yeah. I think that, yeah, like, tour life is so strange. You live on a bus, you know, basically. Um, I mean, you sleep in hotels, for the actors anyway, but... Um, but yeah, so I, I really, I sort of handled my anxiety about it by preparing, by getting all the stuff that I needed. Okay. Um, yeah, but then... And Josephine's not a person with, uh, who's all about stuff. Like, no, you're pretty I don't have a minimalist. Lot yeah. I am. Yeah, I don't buy a lot of stuff. Um, but for this, I did. I really, because I, like, really care about the food that I eat. And I was like, I need to get a cooler. I need to get a, uh, this, you know pillows so I can sleep on the bus and everything um <laughs> so yeah I mean I was so silly about it you know I think I don't know as people know when when a big change happens in life I think that it feels good to find the ways in order to, to like be in control of it in some ways yeah and for me in the nerves of getting ready to start something new like that I it really helped me to kind of you know make my list of the things that I that I needed and okay you know, so so I suggest that for people who are going on tour after this whole crisis um, is over, it's like that making those can be really helpful. And text me if you need suggestions because I found a lot of cool stuff. Okay, cool. <laughs> can you name one, yeah. one thing that you like found you use the most or something? I don't know. Yep, yeah, it's gonna sound silly, but I slept on a dog bed on the bus. What? I got, my bus setup was that I got a dog bed that I folded si sideways across my two seats <laughs> and then had two pillows that I squished myself in with and headphones that you can sleep with to play noises. Essential. Those were like four things, but all essential to my, my a dog bed. Well, did you find one that was like your size or did you have to like? <laughs> yeah, well, it's the size of me curled up sideways, sort of, kind of. You know what? Was it like sleeping on two? Yeah, that is my, not... my niece is here. That's oh, that's fun. so cute. Yes, it's absolutely very innovative. Like I would yes. not have thought yes. of that. Yeah, but that makes a lot like... of sense. Yeah, because it's like yeah. it's like um it's like people who like to you know cuddle with body pillows. It's basically yeah. the same thing. Yeah, right. Cozy. I mean, I figured it out. It took me a few like maybe a week or two to really so get comfortable funny. with us. But okay, you guys, it's so funny because when we go to see shows, like anyone who's watching who saw the show. It seems like that life is very glamorous and it is for two hours a day. It's a little bit glamorous because you're in the big theater and like, you know, meet people at the stage door after and like that yeah. whole aspect. But during the day, it's just hilarious. Like all those actors that you're seeing, like have been on the bus are um, like have had to go into Walmart to like use the restroom, you know, and like have been like napping yeah, on yeah, the yeah. bed, you know, and it's just, it's funny. For those, for thing. those who are, Wait, hold on. For those who are just joining, this is Josephine Cooper, and we're talking about she just um, finished her tour of Finding Neverland, um, her national first national tour. So we're talking about that. Um, but yeah, no, that's like, it, it is a really hard, hard, hard life. I would say just as hard, but a little bit more glamorous than doing the cruise thing. Like, I don't know. The cruise thing seems way, but, yeah. insane. Yeah. I mean, um, I, I honestly did get to a point of really liking it. Like, I really... Because, the bus life? Yeah, because the beautiful okay. thing is that, like, you're sleeping on your dog bed. <laughs> <laughs> or, like, well, also you sleep in the hotel room. To be clear, I'm a baby, and I need at least eight hours of sleep a night. So, like, on the nights we got up early, I would, like, take a nap, you know, in the morning. Okay, so I, like, take my little nap. But then when I wake up, I'm looking out the window at, like, Kansas or Oklahoma or, you know... Yeah. Louisiana or whatever and it was a beautiful experience like it was so special to every day get to just like look out this like beautiful landscape of of the country you know like that that really changed my life like I, I love that of course yeah. well how many how many states did you end up doing we were supposed tour? to do a f oh I don't know I don't know okay that. so you I feel like more than 20 maybe okay a lot that's a lot we moved a lot yeah and we would also see like multiple cities, like we, you know, went to like four or five different cities in Texas, for example. So we'd okay. see different parts of states too, which was very cool. Um, did you, I mean, did you feel like, what did it feel like to do? I mean, this show, I don't know, this show isn't controversial in the sense of like political, like it doesn't have any political undertones, but what did it feel like to do a show in parts of the country, of the United States that 
part don't really see theater. Like the audience is yeah. different. It was so, one of my favorite things was that in some of the places that were the most rural, the yeah. audiences were the most excited. Like my favorite audience, I'll never forget, was in Hayes, Kansas. Mm -hmm. Hayes, Kansas is just in the middle of nowhere, you know? Yeah. Um, and, but like the audience just screamed. Like I, I will never forget that night. Like it was one of the first, it was toward the beginning of the tour, I think, first couple weeks. and. And oh, I remember so cool. really being so surprised also by, of course, in this current time, like this, of course, can't happen. It isn't safe to happen. But seeing how people come out to the theater, like in a rural part of the United States, you see 2,000 people come to the theater. That's awesome. I mean, that just gives, that's, that's reassuring because sometimes I wonder if that's going to be a dying form because people like to sit in their beds and watch Netflix. Not everyone, but you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, of course. I mean, me too. <laughs> in some ways. Yes. But me too. I, um, I, I was really inspired by the fact that, you know, so many people show up all over the country and that I'm so glad that national tours exist because yeah. Broadway isn't accessible to everybody. You know, like Broadway, it's also Broadway's so expensive, but they so expensive. the tickets to the place that you go. So like on our city oh. sheet, like every week it would say like what the prices of the tickets were. And of course theater is expensive and not as accessible as I would like it to be, but is tailored to like what people, you know, what hopefully people could afford in, in the place. Yeah. And, and so I think that that, you know, hopefully gives a lot of people an opportunity to see like a Broadway production um, when it isn't accessible for them to, you know, come to New York. And I think that's so important. I think that it's really, I think national tours are really beautiful. And, and yeah, and necessary yeah. for sure. And then like going off of that, because again, never done something like this. And I'm just curious to know um, the tools that you found most useful for yourself, if you feel like sharing to maintain yeah. your, your stamina, uh, yeah. your vocal health, as well as mm -hmm. your physical health, because yeah. that show if anyone hasn't seen Finding Neverland, like there was a lot more dancing than I expected. And you were doing a lot of yeah. it too. So tell me, tell us about that. Well, the first thing that I think of is when I have so many answers because I'm obsessed with taking care of my body to an extent that my entire cast would always make fun of me um, because it's a little excessive, but it is what I do. You um, can do that. You got to do the, what you got to do. But the first thing that I remember is that we opened Tech and then Preview in Alto, New Mexico, which is at an incredibly high elevation. Okay. So we did the show out of breath. We had oxygen backstage. And wow. I remember thinking to myself, yeah. after this is over, I'm going to do so much cardio because uh -huh. this is so hard. And I was yeah. like, if I had if I'd been doing more cardio, I'd be able to breathe. Um, yeah. I don't know if that's true, but I have been doing more cardio now, remembering Alton Dimension. Yeah. Know, and being like, yeah. I have to do that again. <laughs> My wow. Stronger. Um, but yeah, so for me, um, it is the biggest thing is water and sleep. Um, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So I, I like sort of am just the lame person that never goes out after the show. Like I never use my voice really. I just go back to the hotel room, take a shower, go to sleep, and then um, and then also take a nap in the morning on the bus. Um, and then I have my um, warm ups. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And of course, I mean, I'm also obsessed with warming up for the show. So I'm always like in spaces where I didn't have my own dressing room. You can definitely find me in a stairwell doing a lot of weird yeah. sounding warm ups. Yeah, um, I'm familiar. I'm familiar with some yeah, of your warm ups. Yeah, like, later in the, I mean, I mean yeah. <laughs> a lot of bathroom. I warmed up in a lot of like bathroom stalls with other strangers listening, not audience yeah. members, but like crew members. Yeah. Like, what yeah. Um, yeah. And, uh, yeah, so yeah, a lot of warming up. I do always do yoga every day and just like um yeah, I just worked really hard at you know taking really good care of my body so that I could love doing the show. Because right, what because I really want was to not yeah, not feel well to enough start to doing the show. Exactly, because you know, doing eight shows a week of the same show for an, a year, um yeah. That's hard. <laughs> I mean it's yeah. hard it's hard in the sense that um to keep it fresh, to keep it new, mm -hmm. to find, you know, to find the joy in performing it. So those audience members co coming to see you are truly seeing your show as if it's the first time, 
you know, yeah. like, you know, you don't want to make the audience, you don't want to show the audience, this is my 90th show. <laughs> right. So right. exactly. How like do you see something? Yeah, right. Like, I'm just curious, like, if there's any, um, because I, I mean, I've done plenty of Nutcrackers in my lifetime, yeah. but yeah. they were all different. But the music is very haunting <laughs> to me, like I can yeah. hum that whole score. But anyway, yeah. how, how did you like, what are th any tricks or tips? that you can share with our viewers who are like, how do you keep a show fresh for you? So we're truly as an audience member seeing you do it for like the first time. Yeah. I think um, one thing that I was really, I felt really lucky about was um, my co-star Mark Bacon and I from the beginning of rehearsal, we're mm -hmm. like, let's keep each other on our toes. Not in a like, let's mess with each other way, but in a like, let's not let each other get into doing it the same every night. Um, right. I really, really appreciate it. It was really cool to have in like my main scene partner in the show. Um, that's, that so, means everything. Yeah, yeah. I think it's great. Like if you're casting a show that you're going to do a really long run to just like chat about that in the beginning, like with the main people that you work with. Um, mm -hmm. because for me, I knew it was my first experience doing a show, a run this long, but I thought about it a lot. And I remember thinking in college when I was training, like, how will I keep things fresh and how will I do that? And um, I, I think that the biggest thing, there's a couple of things. One thing is allowing things to hit me differently every night and accepting okay. that like my experience as the character in the scene will be different from day to day and that that's okay. And that like, I don't, it doesn't have to be the same. And that in fact, it's good for it to be different. You know, like yeah. that it also really helped that my sons switched off what roles they were playing so oh, right. I, had, I had four boys and they were played by different actors, different nights. Right. So that really helped because it was different with each of them. And I made a point of having a, Sylvia had a different relationship with each of those kids. So important because they're different kids, kids. So exactly. Yeah. I'm not going to do the same mannerism with no. them because it's a different person and it's a different Peter and Michael, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so, um, so that was something that was really helpful. And then um, I also like to do this thing where during sound check, I would, take in like the space so I'm not in the first I wasn't in the first number for sound check so I'd oftentimes if I was allowed to I'd sneak out into the audience and I would watch sound check from the audience and I would try to put myself into a mindset of like I'm watching this show um oh interesting so, yeah so it would really help me to I I really love and this is one of the things that obviously like just thinking about it as a tearjerker now is I love taking the space of the theater and like right respecting the fact that that theater has been through so much and mm. is filled with like some really beautiful unique energy so what I would usually do is like during sound check I would start by going out in the theater and watching my fellow actors on stage and yeah. taking what it's like to be the audience member and then during my own sound check um I would um I would take the time to look out at the out at the theater and to take it in and to start to just feel the space like connected to my heart. Like I was, yeah. I wish I did this at the time, but I took an amazing um, Alexander Technique class the other day that I recommended to you. Yes. Everyone look up Holly Cinnamon, an incredible teacher. And she did this exercise with us of like connecting. Oh, and someone, oh, okay. This is another amazing actor that is, is um, so is cool. Right now and also <laughs> knows this person, which is awesome. Um, so she talked about like orienting yourself with the space in terms of feeling your own heart mm -hmm. and connecting it to something else and feeling that connection. And I think that I wish I had had her wise words in my mind then, but I think that's what I was doing with the theaters. Like when I was standing there during sound check, I was trying to feel myself in relationship to the farthest away spaces of the theater and just like feeling how it affected me. Yeah. And so then during the show without getting too in my head about anything being like for the audience exactly I would enjoy the experience of the audience's energy affecting me yeah and like enjoy the experience of like in my song that I sing alone what it is to just like feel the audience being there with me whether it's part yeah. of my imagination or actually feeling it like who knows but right. that's part of what made it fresh that is part that of makes so much sense made it yeah because never it's never for the same people and still for many is never the same true because because it's a different day like yeah Sylvia's different that day you know there's yeah. things that of course in these like 
you know, like Broadway, like tour productions, like you must do the blocking the same, you know, you've got to go to like, for anyone who doesn't know, there's numbers on the stage and you have to walk to them, you know, like uh -huh. you got to go to number eight for that line every night, but the yeah. line might come from a different place. Right. You know, and of course. I think that's the fun of, yeah, you know, the fun of being an actor. Like it's always going to yeah. be different to play with it. And I really realized, I was like, I could do a show for years. I would love to do that. I discovered new things all the time. Yeah, I would like text my partner during intermission and be like, "Oh my god, I learned something new!" And it's show like ninety nine. Right. No, yeah. I mean that is that. Yeah, it's really it's it's um easier said than done. But I, you know what of I mean. Course. Like I think you're a special human, <laughs> and you're able to do that. But I'm sure, like I, I've been, I've done shows where, you know, I was able to make it innovative and fresh, but definitely like was around people who didn't have that energy. Of so course. it's yeah, very yeah. hard. It's hard. But and it's I'm also... saying it like I did it all the time. And there were absolutely nights that I left being like, oh, I didn't feel connected to, of course, of course, right. of course, of course. Yeah. Right. Um, what, was there anything? Okay, I think I might be able to go back to my spot now. With my okay, phone. sure. Um, was there anything that surprised you, I uh -huh. guess, about the experience of tour? Whatever that word surprise uh -huh. means to you. I know that's sort okay. of vague. Um, yeah. But just curious. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I think I was really pleasantly surprised by the experience of meeting audience members. It's something that I love so much. Like, I truly love and like I would do it like all night. So it's good that I would like get like a wave from like the company manager being like, you need to get on. Oops, you cut out for a second. Audience members after the show. Yeah. I know it's. I actually, I gotta go back to my spot. Never mind. Yeah, you, you. It's okay. You cut out for a second. I'll just, so I'll you, just stay here. So. So you yeah, were saying that you about, were. Yeah, just talking about connecting with audience members and like that. I, I had thought about that, but I um, hadn't experienced it a lot. Like you know, I of course connected with audience members in the past with the shows, and like my favorite thing ever is to do talkbacks. Like. Yeah, you I, love that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love talk and that's what this is. This is like long form talk back, my favorite thing. I'm obsessed with watching talk backs. I stay for everyone at every show. Oh, I think they're great. Yeah, so great. Um but uh yeah, I think I was um I was really just kind of beautifully beautifully surprised by um yeah, just the times that I got to meet people, you know? And for the most part it was like teenagers that love theater that would come to the stage door. And like Which I just the best more than to talk to them. Yeah. Um, yeah. Enthusiastic, joy. enthusiastic kids who are like just about to embark on this journey themselves. Like that right. is the best. Yeah. And I was that kid. Like, uh, well, me know? too. Yeah. Right. Yeah, Still yes. am. <laughs> Still yeah. am like kind of like a goober. <laughs> yeah. 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 You know, yeah. um, what, I don't know. Do you feel, I mean, this is such a also very vague question and I'm sure there's so many ways we can answer this, but like, mm -hmm. just like, I'm sure as with anything, but a year is a long time. And so the personal journey and the growth that you must have gone through as within yourself is like, must be tremendous. Um, yeah. If you, I don't know, do you have anything to say about that? Yeah, sure. I, um, I think I, I learned a lot about um, really taking care of myself and really depending on myself. Mm -hmm. um, I, I learned a lot about um, what it is to like every day get to do what I love mm -hmm. and how it makes me feel and, and how many things I'm willing to sort of sacrifice for that. Um, I learned a lot about communication with people I love and like how to do that somewhat successfully while being away. Yeah. Um, I, I learned a lot about privacy. <laughs> <laughs> and like and what it is to like sacrifice privacy in certain ways but also how to just like cultivate a sense of um aloneness when i needed it even in the midst of kind of living this life with so many people and not um, be sh not be afraid to ask or yeah that. yeah or just to, like to know when you need to create space for yourself and when to engage again because there were right. some days that like for days in a row i had my own dressing room and i always you know had my own hotel room so there would be days when i hadn't seen anyone <laughs> I like uh -huh. get to the theater and I haven't seen it. And on the bus, people are pretty private and it's like quiet, you know? 
And so, like, I would realize, like, oh, I've gone, like, four days without talking to anyone. I should really, like, go check in with, like, someone during intermission or something. Um, so, yeah, mm -hmm. I think I, I learned a lot about, um, I think, just how to take care of myself. Yeah. How to, um, how to kind of show up for myself and... Um, Maintain the instrument. Maintain your instrument, which is... Yeah. That's everything a huge, a huge 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 lesson yes i think um knowing how to take care of my body knowing how to um you know make make certain sacrifices in order to know that i'd be happy doing the show the next day you know in terms of yeah. like just like going to sleep and yeah. um yeah yeah i think it, i'm i think it will continue to sink in for me how much i've how much i've learned as i get further and further away from that time and maybe closer to a time when I'm doing that again. That makes sense. Um, I think I'll continue to, to realize all the things that I've learned, but I absolutely think that it has, it has solidified um, how much I want to engage with my actor self every single day. Yeah. You know, even if, even when not doing a show. And I think that's like something I love to share with like actor pals is, or like, like people that I like mentor and things like that is like that just because you're doing a show doesn't mean you can't engage with your actor self every day. You know, mm -hmm. even if there's no one to watch, you're just like in your bedroom, like working on a monologue or like, well, a, yeah, we talked about this, class, whatever. we yeah. talked about this, you were, you were telling me when I would call Joe and she was in, on tour, she was trying to find like new place to read or yeah. just, you were consuming material in a different way. Even if you couldn't go and see a play, right. um, you were finding other ways to, I don't know, keep your instrument in tune, even off stage, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it's important to like, accept that like okay like while I'm doing this job like this is really this is my life it's the most Im kind of important thing for me to be focused on but not to lose touch of like I need to call my mom <laughs> you know and, like, yes I need to, yeah like read read a play that isn't the play I'm doing <laughs> right that's exactly it true you know? yeah. yeah um I know it's such a bummer uh Joe's tour was cut short by coronavirus but you but only had very lucky we got really close you know yeah, yeah you only had like people. about like two or three weeks left about about four like a about month. four okay yeah we closed like about a month early um but i just yeah. feel so grateful for the time that we had you know i i'm so sorry for for all my fellow you know actors who were just at the beginning of their tours or in the middle or, or in rehearsals or hadn't even started yeah exactly yeah um, yeah it's a very weird time for so many of us well, that being said, I'm just, I mean, the, so there's, everything's sort of on pause and there's very much a hiatus happening, Yeah. but you do have a film that is either, is it still in post? It did, no, it did premiere. Oh, it did premiere. Yeah. I wasn't able to go. It seems like it was really cool though. So it's yeah, called it Uncanny Harbor? Yep. Okay. Yeah. It premiered um, in February. Okay. Yeah. Where did it premiere at? Um, a movie theater in Boston that I forget what it's called. <laughs> okay. But oh, yeah, that's I mean, fine. It's, yeah, it's a really, it's a, um, sorry, my phone's still. Uh, you, you cut out um, every now and then, it's okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was, it was a wonderful experience. I'm so proud of that creative team. Um, yeah, they're fantastic. So, so it's just going, it's going through, it will go through the film festival circuit, right? Like hasn't started. Yeah, okay. yeah, and I think it will be released. It will have, like, a theatrical release that, like, can't happen right now, of course, but it's available on, like, Apple TV and a few other things for streaming. Oh, okay, yeah. cool. You can just Google it. I, for I forget exactly where it's streaming, but a couple of places. Yeah. Um, That's awesome. Well, mm -hmm. Joe, I want I want to wrap this up. All right, and I do, do I do want to do, guys, if you remember James Lipton oh my from gosh. Inside the Active Classic. Studio. Mm -hmm. Oh, my gosh. Love this show, but my favorite part about the show was this, um, these, these eight questions that he asked everyone at the end. So I have to give him credit cause that's where it comes from. Yes. But I just love, I just freaking love this. Okay. So yeah, what is your favorite word? Rototiller. Cool. I'm I know. I know. I came up with it. I was little. I stick with it. Um, okay. What is your least favorite word? Don't think about it. Just, why am I thinking pumpkin? I like pumpkins. That's well, fine. That's out. your least right. favorite word. Stream the trick with this is like to not think so hard, just like kind of say. I know that's you know? hard. Yeah, you're okay, right. Okay, so pumpkin. Okay, cool. Um, <laughs> I, don't, I like pumpkins. Anyway, we'll continue. I'm sorry. Uh, what turns you on? Sweet cherries. Oh, and fresh figs. Okay. 
what turns you off? Um, fruit flies on my fruit on the counter. <laughs> what sound or noise do you love? <laughs> oh, he's laughing. That's cliche, but it's really true. It gets me. Yeah. Um, what sound or noise do you hate? Oh, cracking knuckles. What is your favorite curse word? Fuck. <laughs> Absolutely. No doubt. <laughs> um, what profession other than your own would you like to attempt? I think acupuncturist. Oh, cool. Okay. Yeah. Fun. yeah. yeah. Um, well, Josephine, this has been so awesome. Yay. I, you were the best. You were the best. I just love you. And I I'm so proud of you. And um, thank you for participating in this, like, this experiment because you were my yeah. first interviewee. Yeah, and, you're such a great interviewer. I, I, well, this was just so much fun. And you know what? I just thought, like, with the coronavirus, um, there's not much to do. And also, I just love just, I don't know, giving people a little bit of a platform and just to share yeah. their work. And um, in some ways, independent artists or up and coming artists are a little bit more relatable than those that who are really, really successful right now yeah. and not to downplay that at all because no, they've no. worked hard. Yeah. Like, but you know I what I'm saying? Instagram lives with the really famous people. I'm like, whoa, this is cool, but I don't relate to you. Yeah. Like I love Meryl yeah. Streep. I can listen to her talk all day, but I of don't, course. I don't. I just can't relate to her her stories yeah, sure. sometimes. I'm no, like, I'll I don't be excited know. to watch ones that you that you do with like I think it's just wonderful. Like, yeah, Thanks. people just speaking about their art, like just you know, working artists or artists that are working on things like exactly over like or not over, but you know what I mean. Different. Yes. Yeah. So where can people people can find you on Instagram, right? At Josephine underscore Florence. Yeah. To follow along her her journey. Yeah. That was wonderful. Well, I love you so much. And thank you, you for indulging me on an hour yes. and a half. And thank of your you, time. friends that watched. How fun. Yeah. We didn't even know. We didn't think that really anyone would watch. We just kind of were going to have it recorded for later. But yeah, I must exactly. Admit, it is a thrill. It's cool. And we appreciate yeah. it, guys. Yeah. Well, I, I love you. And um, stay cool because it's a hot one today. I know. I have my AC, though. It's really a game changer. I'm very excited. I know. Yeah, and also, like, just the couple people that um, were watching that I sure. saw the show, like, fans that I met, just remember that feel free to reach out anytime, always happy to answer questions or that sort of thing. It really it really brings me a lot of fulfillment to talk to young people who are in theater and, you know, engaging engaging with the arts, so always here for that. That's so cool. Love you, Joe. Yeah, you too. Nice to see you. Bye, I know, guys. So kick oh, me out. Oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kick you out. Okay, sounds good. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs>